Well, Makita just got in the grease gun game. Let's check it out when we get back. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. The Makita XPG 01 18 volt grease gun. Now, if you want the bare tool, it's the XPG 01Z. And if you want the kit, I believe it's the XPG 01T, which comes with a two amp hour battery and a charger. We'll talk about pricing and warranty in just a moment. Let's dive in deeper on each of these details, then we'll come back as normal. We'll use it and then come back and talk about pricing and warranty. This is the Makita XPG01 and it's their 18 volt grease gun. Uh, this is not a brushless motor, but this is one of those cases where it really doesn't need a brushless motor. A brushed motor will work just fine. As I mentioned, XPG01, so this is where the 18 volt battery will or would will reside you can get this as a bare tool as we see it here the xpg 01z would tell us bare tool uh, or you can get it kitted with a two amp hour battery and a charger as well so you know if you're needing makita batteries then probably best bet to uh to actually buy it as a kit and we'll cover the pricing here in just one moment uh so with the kit, two amp hour battery, which should suffice you on several different greasing jobs, probably last you most of a day, unless you're doing heavy equipment, uh, farm uh, implements, things like that. Anyway, so we've got our 18 volt grease gun. What kind of features does it have? Well, a couple of neat features that I really like, and it's two trigger locks. And the reason I say that is we can lock it off so we can throw it in the toolbox. And a lot of times when we're doing Greasy stuff, we're not taking the best care of our tools, or at least we're not too concerned about cleanliness because it's just going to get nasty. So a lot of times we're kind of throwing these things around. So to have that trigger lock on there to make sure this thing doesn't come on when we throw it in the toolbox, throw it in the truck, is nice to have. There's a second trigger lock, and that is a trigger on lock. I don't have any grease in here yet, uh, so I can do this. But So this is the trigger on lock, so I can pull this trigger up, push that and it's locking that trigger on. So we're doing big jobs. Again, I mentioned heavy equipment or uh, new parts and pieces, things like that, and we need to really fill those with grease. That lock on is really nice to have. Now, speaking on that, there are two speeds here, one and two. Two is a bit misleading because it's really not just speed two and high speed. You get low speed, and then speed two is an auto mode that supposedly is supposed to be faster as well as supposed to be read the feedback of the pressure sensitivity it's getting on the part that it's filling. So uh, you've got a 10,000 PSI max on this, which is plenty to grease most of everything unless you're getting into really uh, high pressure situations. Regardless, for the most part, this grease gun is going to do fine at 10,000 PSI. But again, speed two is more of an auto speed mode and not just a high speed. And speaking of the trigger lock on, we also have a variable speed trigger here on the grease gun. So we may have it in you know, speed one or speed two, and then we want to actually vary the grease output uh, based on how much input we give it, and we can do that. So again, since I don't have any grease in here, you'll see I can make that go really slow. I can ramp it up. So that variable speed trigger gives you some more flexibility in how much you want to dispense. And we'll test that here in one moment. Now, max flow rate on this, I believe is 10 ounces per minute. So to give you an idea, uh, one of these tubes here is 14 ounces. So you're looking at just a little over a minute to dispense this complete tube. So basically once you load this up with the standard cartridge in it, then it's going to unload it within a, about a minute and a half or so. So we got a four foot hose that comes standard on the XPG-01 and then we have this little holder here where you can wrap this hose around, stick that in there and that's not going anywhere. And, and again, you know, something to hold that in place when we throw it in the truck or, you know, carry it around, what have you. It's not just dangling somewhere and dangling in the dirt that keeps it nice and clean. We also have an LED light on the front of this. Now, some tools I look at with an LED being just kind of um, not gimmicky, but sometimes not really needed that much or ne never be needed that much. In this case, this is a great idea because many times when we're under a vehicle, under a piece of equipment, in the wheel well of a piece of equipment, things like that, we do need a little bit of light. So rather than putting a headlight on or, uh, you know, trying to hold another flashlight, 
You just hit the LED button and now we've got light to cast upon wherever we're working to get the grease gun on the grease fitting and get it filled with grease. Not much here, here on the other side. Uh, you've got knurling here on the, on the actual body, which is nice when we've got our greasy hands, we can still spin that off and reload that cartridge. Um, and then a plastic handle back here, looks like it's driven in with a, with a roll pin, um, typical spring lever. Uh, so pretty much the same as most other grease guns. So we'll, we'll show loading this here in one moment, but basically we're gonna pull this out, rock it to the side, put it in that latch, and then spin the tube off and load the grease gun. Pretty typical rubber overmolding from Makita. Looks a lot like any of their other tools, whether it be a jigsaw, whether it be a, a drill, impact driver, what have you. Uh, pretty much that same um, uh, design work, if you will, and the rubber overmold. So very easy to handle. Now, once we get grease all over everything, it really doesn't matter anyway. Uh, looks like we've also got some, uh, some shock resistance here in the battery. So if we're running a large battery on this and we're dropping the tool, banging around, we're saving that battery's life there by having a little bit of flexibility. So taking a little bit of that shock absorption out of there rather than the battery taking the brunt of that. Right here on the front of the tool is basically a bleeder valve. Not basically, it is. It's a bleeder valve here. So we'll show you how to use this in a moment. I will tell you, I've seen many people that don't understand the value of that bleeder valve and it can definitely help you. So we'll show that. So let's load this thing up with some grease. And then once we prime it, uh, we'll take it over under a vehicle and use it a bit. And then finally, when you're carrying this thing around and you're doing a lot of jobs uh, and you're doing a lot of lube stuff, then you've got a nice strap here that we can strap on, clips on, nice metal clasp here, and right there on metal pins on the machine as well. to make it very easy to hook our strap and it's gonna carry that very well. It's not just plastic. Uh, the strap's gonna hold up as well as the metal pin should hold up as well. Before we load this thing up with some grease, let's take some measurements here just to give you an idea. Height-wise, you're right at 10 inches, just below 10 inches for the height. And then from the snout of the machine back to the handle, you're at 16 inches. Uh, so 16 inches from this handle back here all the way to the snout. And as I mentioned, we get a 48 inch grease hose. I think it's 47 and a quarter, but let's just call it 48. Now width wise on the machine, uh, it's not too wide. About three and a half inches, three and a quarter inches, uh, depending on where you measure it through here. But still should be slender enough to get in tight places. If you're fitting in there, then it should be able to fit in there as well. And then as far as weight goes, I think this thing's around 10 pounds, if I'm not mistaken, but let's see here. Okay, we're zeroed out, and I'm going to measure it with the 2 amp hour battery on board. So 11, and a half, 11 pounds, 5 ounces, so uh, 11 and a third of a pound. Uh, so you're looking at 16 ounces to a pound, so you're just over a quarter. So 11 pounds, 5 ounces. Okay, we're gonna load this thing up with some grease. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this rod out. Let me show you here. So you see this rod, it goes in, it's got a nice perfect circle down here. And then we have this uh, little peninsula that comes out right here. So we're gonna pull this rod all the way out. And then there's a little groove there. You can lean that up and lock that into place. So basically there's a long spring in here that pushes on a plunger. Well, what we've just done is pulled that spring all the way back, pulled the spring and plunger all the way back so we've got no pressure pushing forward. And I'll show you here in one second. So now you see there's some remnants of the grease from the factory uh, where they probably tested it. And then deep down inside there is a spring and plunger. In fact, here we go. You'll see that plunger come up. So that's what's typically pushing on the grease to push that out of the machine and then the pump picks it up and uh, continues to supply uh, the pressure out the hose. So let's again pull this back and lock that back. Now, I've done this many times and people get this wrong a lot. So we've got two ends to our grease tube, to our standard 14 ounce grease tube, okay? So we've got an end here with a peelable uh, metal lid and we've got an end here with just a plastic cap on it. So I'm gonna take my plastic cap off. Do not peel this off yet. So take the end with the plastic cap on it, pull it off. That's what we're gonna put in first. In fact, you cannot put this in, this in first because that metal ring around it will not let it go in. So we go in this way. All right, I'm gonna take that all the way back. 
and it should it should be able to go around that plunger and all the way down in there let's try this one more time now I've got this back shove this in there and it looks like I'm gonna to have to pull this back even further to get that the rest of the way in there not understanding that when the plunger should go inside that but still we'll uh, I guess we'll go with this for right now there's not a second latch there by any means but it looks like it can compress back there so I'm gonna now that I've got it in the tube now I can pull this lid off but when I when I press here so when I press here it's pressing on that rod I can feel a little bit of feedback anyway I know somebody's gonna say I did something wrong but I've done this many times so I did have to put a little pressure to get this started okay so now we've still got our rod pulled out the back here so we've got our tube nice and tight in there nice and high, hand tight now what we want to do we don't want to just relieve this rod and let the plunger go in we want to open up this valve right here go ahead and give it a few turns and so we've got a little hole right here in this bleeder in this bleeder screw bleeder valve and so now I'm gonna release the rod and so we've got grease coming out so as soon as that that uh, spring started pushing on it you saw we started pushing grease out so now that that confirms now that we have grease all the way up to the pump so we don't have to let the pump just sit there and pull and pull and pull and pull and pull because really that pumps not made to pull it's made to push so now we've got our grease all the way up to the pump we've got it bled out our bleeder screw and we should be good to go now and you'll see on this rod that now we can push because it's not actually pushing on the plunger the rod is now pushing past the plunger the spring is coiled up back here pushing on the plunger and just the rod slips through the grease and pushes all the way back in here okay now just to give you an idea of flow rate uh, and to show that we've got everything primed and it still may take a, a second or two but we're gonna put so we've got that on one we've got our battery in and we've got our lock off so here we go yep so we're already pumping grease if we had not bled that bleeder screw, we would be pumping for a lot longer than that before we got grease out. We still may hit an air pocket or two because that's still the factory grease. It's like a big old caterpillar larvae. Anyway, so now I'm gonna go to two. So quite a bit faster in level two. And again, that's supposed to be an auto mode as well. So let's go over, use this and uh, see what we think about it. Let's first clean our fitting. Make sure we got all the dirt out of there. And let's go to speed one here. All right, we got grease coming out. Again, we'll use speed one here. And we got grease coming out there too. And this is a great point to show, even though I have really good lighting in our shop, at least plenty of lighting, still when you're under a vehicle, the vehicle's on a lift, without any auxiliary lighting, it's pretty dark right here. In fact, the camera's doing a great job of lightening that up because it's very dark right here where this fitting is. So that's a great, place where we can show for that light to come in handy
So it has all the bells and whistles that we want in a grease gun, right? We want to be able to pull a trigger, it grease stuff. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Uh, be able to run on the batteries that maybe we already have. So Makita's doing that. Uh, you get a one and two speed, so you get low speed, and then you get the higher speed that's supposed to be auto as well. We really didn't see it kick into an auto mode, but at the same time, we're not doing a lot of high capacity stuff. So, so on the agriculture side, you know, farm implements, things like that, or even heavy equipment that takes large volumes of grease, uh, that may be, come in very handy. Even some of your heavy trucks, that may come in very handy. But, but as far as us, we love working in just speed one and two and dispensing what we need to. I do like the variable speed trigger, so you can easily adjust kind of how much flow you want out of this machine, because let's, let's be honest, 10 ounces a minute, being able to pretty much empty this entire thing in, in about a little over a minute is plenty of what we need. Uh, we also like the, the strap that comes with it. You can throw it over your shoulder, especially when you're under lift and walking around and you're having to use one hand to, you know, to put the, uh, the actual hose on the fitting and typically another hand to wipe grease off or keep grease out of your face, what have you. Anyway, nice strap for that. LED light works well. Also, that's a nice addition to be able to shine light in an area where it's typically dark under there unless you've got additional lighting, uh, but typically you're running in and out of there. So having that light is great. And a lot of times you may be under a boat trailer or beside a boat trailer, even on the side of the road. Um, so that LED light should come in very handy. Pricing on this, if you want bare tool, so if you want this without a battery, uh, the XPG-01Z, that's gonna run you $239, gonna come with a three-year warranty. Now, if you want a kit, you can get it in a kit with a two amp hour battery and a charger, so single battery and a charger, and that's only adding like 60 bucks. You can get it for like 299. So that's the better buy, uh, unless you just don't need a battery or a charger, but still might be a better buy for you getting that additional charger and battery. Uh, for $299 and still three year warranty. So check it out for yourself. Again, it's the XPG 01 18 volt Makita grease gun. Also, if you haven't done so yet, would you think about subscribing to our channel? Maybe even hitting that thumbs up or like button. And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling. <laughs>